Don't tell your mother Kiss one another Die for each other We're cold for the summer So Everybody knows that I believe in an independent California. I even went so far as earlier this year um, have it, uh, thought about even making a, um, a California independence page and going about this, blah, 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 blah. Um, and, the, you know, this, I, things just kind of came up as I went along with the year and I never really got around to it, never really got much of a response to it, so I just kind of and to be honest kind of forgot about it but what I recently just found today was that there is a ongoing petition and an ongoing movement that aspires to have California become independent now of course California is not going to become independent overnight and of course this movement is you know this movement may the plan to have this on the ballot won't happen until 2020. So if California were to ever gain its independence, it won't be gaining independence for at least another four or five years. Essentially what this movement is kind of inspired by has been the was the Scottish referendum. And let's be honest, the Scottish referendum was so tightly close that while the uh, no vote ended up winning by it, it, it the no vote ended up winning but it won by a slim margin and, and Scotland is very equally divided and we obviously see how divided it is due to the rec um, the May um, United Kingdom uh, general election and frankly if people had been more aware of everything votes have actually shown that there probably would be more of the no voters they would have voted yes and Scotland probably would have had its independence but um, essentially what this movement also aspires to is to have an independent Cal uh, Catalonia it believes that Cat uh, Catalonia should be uh, independent from Spain I myself believe that even though personally I think that an independent Catalonia would just be very very bourgeois but it would be independent nonetheless and I personally believe in independent sovereignty of nations that if you believe that your country should be independent from another country and you have legitimate reasons for that then there's really no set reason why you shouldn't be able to leave and that's always been my guiding principle in believing in Californian independence. I am an American, I was born an American, and frankly I always will probably see myself as an American, you know, despite what my country does and everything like that. I would not say I'm a proud American, but I do, but I will always say that I am an American. At the same time, I also view myself first and foremost, however, as a Californian that will never go away either. I will always view myself first and foremost as a Californian because in my mind Californian is a California is a nation within a nation. We are our own we should be considered our own national group. We have our own culture, we have our own heritage, we have our own history, we have our own practically our own version of the English language and Spanglish, even if you want to even go there, we are a very diverse culture. We have, a, you know, like I said, very unique sort of, you know, cuisine and you know the way that you know, and and the way that we just interact with others, and the way that as Californians we coexist as a people, how we coexist, and our diversity is what makes us us. You know, and we are, you know, we are the tenth, you know, the, this group that I'm about, that I'll talk about in a minute, claims us to be the seventh largest economy, which is actually a slight error because we're actually the tenth largest economy. But the point being is that we still make up a very large D GDP within this, within the global economy. And we make up a pretty large amount of the GDP of the United States, despite that you know, a lot of Southerners and a lot of other people within the U.S. would tend to disagree with that. But we typically, but we are. We are a very major key component. And 
this movement, which is called Sovereign California, or Yes California, as its actual name, real name is, um, Yes California actually seeks to have California be independent, and through a reformist mean, means, through a referendum, much like the Scottish held. Essentially, this group um, plans to put, have and trying to get, uh, garner enough signatures, they're holding events and rallies and stuff like that. Right now, they're primarily in Southern California, but they do seek to have rallies in Northern California as well, and to unite the the um, unite the country. I say country, unite the 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 state under the means that we are not a state. We are militarily occupied. Which is another thing I've also stated in previous videos. We are militarily occupied and we're basically forced to join the Union. Primarily because of uh, imper U.S. imperialism as well as the fact that capitalism intervened because they found gold in them, thar hills. Which is a complete butchering of the English language, but anyway, but uh, that's irrelevant. And so essentially we, you know, have been part of this greater community that spies on us, doesn't really act within our own interests, though California does lead a very large, has a very large stake in the political role of this country. Um, but essentially California is, you know, has this great spirit, kind of a lot in the way that Texas kind of does just on a different political scale and it's the fact that Californians ourselves we do have this very you know outgoing very independent spirit that where you know if someone doesn't like what we do or doesn't want to do something that we do that's fine by us but we are doing what's always best for us and when people try to force things on us, it really makes it quite difficult. In fact, the whole fact of this, uh, you know, I think that will be a larger even debate um, politically this year, and what even might drive the political scale uh, over the next coming years is over the issue of immigration, especially concerning the issues of Donald Trump. And... Um, you know, Californians are very anti-corporation. We have historically been, let's be honest, an anti-establishment state. And we have had this very rough, um, you know, liberal to even radical sort of, you know, form of political, social justice and stuff like that in this country. Um, so it's not really hard to believe that there is a movement. Now, Mostly the movement in California for Californian independence has always remained small. And it's still, in comparison to 38 million people, is still very small. I mean, when you consider that it's only got like, what, 6,500 followers on Facebook, but it's growing. And there is people that do have like-minded views that think that California that California is a nation and that California should, you know, should or could be independent or that... Um, you know, at least Californians should have some form of uh, greater autonomy. And so, you know, there's these vastly different, you know, but similar viewpoints that, that Californians hold. And we, I, I hate to agree, uh, to disagree somewhat with, um, with Webb from, uh, from Yes, California, I wouldn't exactly say that Californians are special. I don't really like using that term. We're not exactly... Because special implies to me some sort of form of entitlement or some form of, you know, benefit. We're not exactly so as much special as we are um, just a very unique, you know, group of people, a very unique community. And... Yeah, I just think that it's, I think that's the better term for that. But he does have a point when he says that uh, if you, that, you know, you say you're from Nevada or you say you're from Ohio, you say you're from Vermont, you say you're from Alabama or Florida or something like that, 
no one really seems to care they just say you know they usually you know, just know that you're part of the US so you're an American usually though when I've traveled especially when I traveled to other states um, or talked to other people in from other countries and I've told them that I'm Californian they typically get you know they typically have a, a different attitude towards me and where I come from as opposed to if I was from you know like Virginia or something um, you know in that sense that they they there's you know a lot of people see a stark contrast between Californians and act and may and actual Americans and it's not that they're trying to be insulting it's not that they're trying to be edgy or anything like that or they're trying to spark some debate it's just the uniqueness that California has and the fact that we are uh, culturally and you know we and uniquely uh, different than our other American counterparts and far be it for me to even go this much but I think that's kind of part of the West Coast culture um, but, but California is the key to that California is really the the, um, the icing on the cake of that I mean we are the very very foundations even and so we do have this very uniqueness in our culture our ver this uniqueness in our language you know I mean, we're, we're kind of like the capital of slang, and as much as we hate it, the fact that we can also butcher the English language even further than Americans can, but at least but at least we do it in a form that's a little bit more stylish and, you know, hipster, I guess. But we do do, you know, we, we have this very interesting language, this very interesting... Uh, culture, a very distinctive sort of diversity that not other state, a lot of other states have, except maybe Texas, exactly. You know, as an ex another example. Um, but I, but my point being is that this is a group that I've recently found that has been um, very support that is that supports a lot of my viewpoints. Um, now, granted, I they are more they are reformists, they are social democrats and social liberals, but I think in some ways this is also a grouping that can also um, unite a lot of Californians with differing viewpoints, and so I I I actually kind of find that they align themselves with some a lot of my um, my regionalist and dare I say, na you know, California nationalist sort of viewpoints, my independence viewpoints. Um, and while I may obviously disagree with them in certain lines of politics, on the aspect of independence, they definitely nail a lot of the values that I've actually found myself um, aligned with for a while. So... And it's hard saying that I've actually, you know, said to, it's hard to say it, but I've actually come to, a, you know, had a lot of difficulty finding acceptance from, you know, different groups or finding a, a, the right group that fit me. And I find that California, the Yes California is a movement that I could get behind, even if it's a little, even if it's bourgeois. And I mean, one of the things that we've always found is that despite our differences of being whether we're revolutionaries or you know revi revisionists or reformists or bourgeois or whatever the case is we usually unite against a common enemy until we basically have to hash out our differences amongst ourselves and this is one of those situations where one of the key goal objectives in trying to achieve what we want and that would be in, in in the case of where I'm from California that would be achieving Californian independence first and foremost that would be a form of breaking free of the of, of basically of the 
government of the uh, basically of the state that I that I you know would rather personally see through overall revolution but the point is breaking free of that government and while I don't necessarily I mean it's one of those things where obviously you want an alliance with the US but you also don't want to be an imperialist puppet of them and you don't want to have to be that sort of thing like that and so yeah it's kind of a convoluted issue because you know the fact of the matter is I have family that you know are Americans and live within other parts of the country and I'll be honest I mean I don't want to necessarily be away from them and I'd like to be able to travel freely to see them so it's one of those issues that I have problems with so anyway it's the point of um, this movement though being in favor of trying to achieve that change that that the, that benefit that I want which is to you know have an independent California now of course this also there's a lot of details and a lot of debate that can go on with California independence one of those key things right now being that we're in the middle of a drought and if we you know if and, and whether we can come out of this drought at the end of the thing especially with talks about Nino and everything else whether we can come out of that, you know, in a in save face, and if not, what can be done to save us about that? The other thing would be um, how to repair our crippled economy, and how we could establish, you know, that and our own GDP and everything else um, in the basis uh, basics of um, on the basis of of our own economic system. And much like Scotland, we would find ourselves in a situation, uh, you know, it's like, what would we still be, what currency would be we be using? Would we continue using the U.S. dollar, or would we end up having to create our own currency? Um, also, we also have key military bases like Coronado, uh, Camp Pendleton, um, and, and Travis Air Force Base, and Beale as well. And we also have China Basin and the um, Chocolate Mountains. You know, we have very strategic military bases here. And so it would be one of those things where we'd have to hash out issues like that with, our, you know, the U.S. military and, you know, how to go about with that. You know, even striking deals with the U.S. military if we had to, which actually would only be further engaging U.S. imperialism. And personally, if we end up doing anything, I'd much rather have the U.S. military out of my out of my country and have our have us take control of those military bases. But that's you know that's that. So there's a lot of things that are left you know undecided about that. And then obviously, what form of government would we take? Obviously, you know, would we, you know, would we basically end up just becoming like another friggin' puppet sort of state like the U.S.? Would we end up uh, 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 another puppet state to the U.S.? Would we have a government like that? Would we have a more Westminster style? Would we have a direct democracy? Personally, I'm always in favor of that. Um, you know, basically it would be this hashing out of things, or would we be more of a federative sort of front between the between the two regions, between like, you know, separate regions and stuff like that. There was a talk by venture capitalist um, um, I forgot his name, but the guy that proposed the, the, the six Californias. If we became our own independent nation, then I could see the idea of having six, you know, federative states aligned, um, you know, aligned all at once. There's a lot of other issues that would come with that, but at least as a, as a nation, California could hash that out and stuff like that and better be able to govern itself if that were to occur. So, 
you know, I, I'm all in favor also of a federative union. But it does, there's a lot of issues that, that definitely would arise out of this. And these are all concerns and questions we can talk about and hash out over time. But I definitely do have to say that if you are interested in Californian independence, if you believe in Californian independence, or you have some sort of leaning you know, or interest in the idea of California being more sovereign or being, um, being more autonomous or being, you know, or even if you just simply believe that California has this uniqueness and this, like, in culture and diversity and language and everything else, you know, take a look at, uh, take a look at Yes, California. Uh, follow them on Twitter, follow them on Facebook, um, check out their YouTube. I actually did kind of uh, watch a couple of videos uh, from this organization, and again, I find that I agreed to some degree uh, with their views and I do so I, I do really think this is an authentic sort of grouping that we can as Californians can get behind and I think that is a lot of us we can get behind um, so yeah if you really are serious about that check that out um, sign the petition that they've got going the, the uh, yeah because again we need signatures and we need the, these signatures by you know within the next couple of years you know we've got a few years to do it but we are going to need these signatures if we hope to get this on the ballot by 2020 and if we can get it on the ballot in 2020 then that you know, really can get us, you know, that can steamroll us into a actually fighting for an independent state, uh, independent California. So I really think it's quite interesting that I came across this, and yeah, let's just hope for the best out, out of things and play it, you know, by ear. You know, it, it's, it may seem like a long shot now, but that's what the Scots said for, you know, for, for some time as well. And they came so freaking close. And even if we think about it now, they probably could have won their independence. Now, do I also agree that through reform that California will gain independence? Not necessarily. It's the same way I view Scottish independence and Catalonian independence and Puerto Rican independence. Do I really think that we could achieve independence through peaceful resolution? Not necessarily. I think that we could definitely, you know, we could end up getting concessions. I mean, the United States could always go the route that Britain did and try to give us more autonomy in, in a form of, dev, uh, of devolution. But, um, but I, you know, I, you never, you just have to kind of go it as it goes. So yeah, I'm Norcal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, proud Californian independence supporter, and this has been Norcal Corner. Peace.